secret societies, the reptilians, um, you know, QAnon, um, satanic ritual abuse, and the secret space program, you know, it's going to catch some flack. You know, there's, there's no way around it. We expected Facebook and other uh, social media to try to block it from um, coming out to the mainstream, but uh, it's coming out anyway. You even saw a huge smear campaign against some of the people in the movie and the movie itself, but it still is going viral. I don't think anything can hold back the message of this movie. So I think what you can expect is for it to basically be seen everywhere. A lot of people are going to have their paradigms questioned, if not smashed, and they're going to, going to have to at least open their minds and consider looking at the world in a whole other way. So you have to understand that when it comes to a subject like the secret space program, the amount of media censorship, the amount of opposition that we have encountered is totally outrageous. This doesn't make sense to me if what we were talking about was actually untrue. It actually makes a lot more sense that we're getting censored this badly if in fact what we're talking about has an underlying grain of truth. So that's the first thing. Why on literally the day before the film is going to premiere on direct-to-video release, do we have the social media giant Facebook telling us that we are not authorized to comment on current events or politics. And I talked to the guys, by the way, at the studio, and what they said was that the authorization process takes 10 days, okay? And if you ask, they almost never give you permission because they did the research. And when you get that question, you don't, you're likely, lucky to even get a response. So what's going on here? Why would people be so upset about the secret space program? Why would they care? Why would the, if you want to call it that, the deep state, use social media against us in this way? In other words, if we're not telling you the truth, if this is all just a big make-believe, when you try to sanitize people's opinions, there's clearly an agenda behind that. And that is like popping open the manhole cover to a really dark sewer that a lot of people don't want to look at. But you know what? If we don't go deep within and try to find the reasons for why these very bizarre things are happening in our society, then we are doomed to repeat the same mistakes that we've been making all throughout recorded time. And I don't think that that's where we need to be as a society at this point. I think we need to transcend the idea of my way or the highway, might makes right, take it or leave it, this kind of stuff. The internet is supposed to be free. It's supposed to be something where everybody can talk. And that's another question that I've asked to people who are skeptical about the things that we talk about, like the secret space program. I asked them this question. Well, if you are so threatened by this information that you need a corporation to prevent you from even seeing it. Don't you feel that you're cool enough, knowledgeable enough, smart enough, intelligent enough to understand for yourself what's true? Don't you feel that you have the pizzazz in your life to be able to decide whether you want to believe something? Do you really need a company like Facebook to tell you the truth? The DC flyover was an event that occurred over successive weekends in July of 1952 in Washington, DC. And what had happened was that there was a mass sighting right over the Capitol building in Washington, DC. There was many lights in the sky. Now, many people believe that this was a UFO or an extraterrestrial incident, but in fact, it was not. It was German saucers, German craft that were flying over the Capitol building and essentially forcing the hand of the Americans to accept many of these Nazi scientists into their control structures. When many of these Nazi scientists came into America after World War II in Operation Paperclip, they infiltrated into basically every power structure in the United States, government, media, medical systems, basically everything. After World War II, James Forrestal went to Germany to tour many of the research facilities that the Germans had, 
over in Europe, and John F. Kennedy actually accompanied him on those tours. Some believe that Kennedy was actually given information by Forrestal about secret space programs and the UFO phenomenon. And near the end of James Forrestal's career, he was also embroiled in many policy struggles within the United States government. He wanted to disclose the UFO phenomenon and the technologies associated with it. It was said that he committed suicide by jumping out of a high-rise hospital that he was staying in at the time of his death. But of course, many people are also believing that he was actually pushed out of the window and in fact assassinated to prevent him from working to disclose these technologies and UFO projects. Recently, over the past few months, Donald Trump has been talking about the U.S. Space Force. Both of you guys have been talking about it for a long time. Why do you think the president's mentioning it now? Well, I've talked over a year about the alliance. And the alliance is made up of a, a loosely knit group of people fighting the cabal. The alliance had sort of made a deal that they were going to go for a partial disclosure which is they're going to let us know about certain technologies, certain parts of our history, but in little pieces and protracted out over 20 to 50 years. Well, those of us in this full disclosure project, we want full disclosure and we want full disclosure now, and that's what we're working for. So a part of this slow release of information is going to be, oh, we uh, have had some secret technology for a while, but guess what? We can just fly out to the, um, you know, maybe to the moon and back, maybe to Mars on extended um, excursions, but we're, re we're pretty much still around the Earth right now. Uh, but we do have some uh, anti-gravitic technologies and, uh, you know, we're now letting you know about it. Well, I've been talking about that being a part of this partial disclosure. And the Space Force I think is a way for um, them to aggregate all of these secret uh, pro programs, secret space programs on the military industrial complex level, to aggregate them and uh, I guess do a debut under the, the Space Force moniker. I've had different answers regarding President Trump and whether in fact he has been briefed on the extraterrestrial presence. One of the things that I think I can get away with saying, and you know, there's always a risk here, is that Pete Peterson told me that during the t time of the 2016 election, remember, Gaia was advertising our show Cosmic Disclosure on the front page of Drudge Report, which was grand central for all of the news related to the election. So there we are on the front page being seen by millions and millions of people. And during that time, Pete had some episodes on the show. Somehow, according to Pete, Trump actually did phone him and asked him, is the stuff that you're saying in the show with David Wilcock actually true? And Pete said yes, and Trump said, thank you, that's all I need to know. It was a very short conversation. So, does Trump know what's really going on? And from what I've heard, again from Pete Peterson in this case, you don't get your full cosmic security clearance. Even as the President of the United States, they don't give you that clearance until you've been president for two and a half years. And he hasn't quite been president that long yet. Because remember, the election was at the end of 2016, so you have the year 2017, 2018. So based on that statistic, Trump wouldn't be getting information about the cosmic level of clearance until mid-2019. However, we do believe that thanks to this group called the Alliance, which is again an international group comprising a majority of the different countries of the world, their governments, their militaries, and a surprising number of the military and intelligence community here in the US. They are all working now for a common goal, which is to stop this insanity that is going on with the globalist elite who are literally trying to depopulate the planet. They want to reduce how many people are here by billions. They even put that initiative out there in the so-called Georgia Guidestones, where it says that they want to bring the planet's numbers down to half a billion people. 
Now, I've heard from certain insiders that they've now bumped the number up to potentially as high as two billion, but that still means five billion people gone. And this is insanity. Remember, they do have very elaborate underground facilities that can hold millions of people. They have incredible underground drilling technology. They have the ability to build incredible cities in a relatively short time. And that is where a lot of our money is going. Our money is not just disappearing. It's going underground and it's going off planet. And this is no different than what we see in the history of Rome, in which Rome was expanding so much that now all of their money is offshore because they're busy trying to build empires outside the homeland and the homeland ends up crumbling. Except in this case, the homeland is the Earth's surface. What we're not seeing is these gorgeous, glistening, beautiful underground cities. All of these various shuttle systems that they call the sub-shuttle that allows you to be transported at very high speeds from one city to another. We don't see all the spacecraft that they've been designing. We don't see the elaborate build-outs they have on the moon, which are usually on the dark side so that we don't see the lights when the moon is obscured by the Earth's shadow. We don't see any of the stuff that they've got on Mars. We don't see the stuff that they have on various other moons and asteroids in our solar system. This is real. This is not science fiction. We are being lied to on an unbelievable level. And Trump definitely is aware of at least a good part of what is going on. And that is why I believe on September 19th that QAnon, which does definitely appear to be coming from the Trump administration, anybody who studies it for very long, you're gonna figure that out pretty fast. QAnon said that programs exist outside the public domain regarding secret space programs. The problem, of course, is the president is not on a need-to-know basis. So we are dealing with a corporate structure that has completely broken away from the elected, legitimate, governmental bodies of the Earth. They don't answer to anybody, they're not accountable to anybody, and they have a technological advantage that makes it very difficult to approach them on their own terms. But this is another interesting area, which is the idea that the secret space program itself, despite being what Richard Dolan would call a breakaway civilization, actually does have its own alliance where they are doing their part to try to bring all of their technology to us. Understand that the whistleblowers I've spoken to, the insiders have said that the technology in the secret space program is so vast that it would literally solve all of the problems we have on Earth. Clean up radiation, desalinate water and bring it to the point where it's drinkable, greening the deserts, solving all of our problems with trash, solving all of our problems with hunger, with poverty, starvation, homelessness, you name it. There is nothing that we can't do with the technology that already exists. This technology also includes portal travel, the ability for us to go to the stars. It's truly phenomenal stuff, and it shouldn't be kept hidden from us. So wouldn't it be amazing if President Trump decided to come forward with what he knows? And that seems to be a big part of what's going on here. And I've been talking about this for many years. Pete Peterson was giving me briefings from the Alliance all the way back in 2009, where they had a plan to do mass arrests of the people in the so-called deep state. And now what we're seeing is over 55,000 sealed indictments on the books. And we're about to get another update as of October 31st, which is today, the time that I'm taping. And it's probably gonna be a few thousand more. Could even be over 60,000 by now, I don't know yet. But the point is, those sealed indictments contain many, many names of people in the deep state. And sealed indictments can have up to 93 people's names in them. This is another important point. When I went back and I looked at various other sealed indictments that became unsealed, such as when they were busting organized crime rings for drugs, I saw plenty of them that had 30 people listed, 40 people listed, this kind of thing. So don't get hung up on 55,000 sealed indictments as if that means it's 55,000 people. The number could be a lot higher than that. And so we really don't know how this is gonna happen, when this is gonna happen, what form it's gonna take, 
but it is going to be really incredible. We stand at the birth of a new millennium, ready to unlock the mysteries of space, to free the Earth from the miseries of disease, and to harness the energies, industries, and technologies of tomorrow. After the inauguration, the president signed a number of secret memorandums stating that he wanted the release of advanced technology. And a lot of this technology was involved in the space program. We know that President Trump is aware of advanced technologies because his uncle was the one who went in and cleared out the safe of Tesla after his death. Aside from the Secret Space Program Alliance, we have a different alliance. The Alliance is an international group. It is a confederacy. There are lots of different factions, some of which agree, some of which do not agree, about the only thing that they all have in common is they want to see this elitist cabal come down in flames. They do not want these people trying to kill off most of the planet, trying to control all of this immensely high technology. The Alliance also consists of a surprising majority now of personnel in the U.S. military and in the U.S. intelligence community. So we're going to have to deal with the fact sooner or later and probably sooner that not everybody in the government is bad. This is part of the PSYOP that was put out through movies and through media to get us to completely distrust all levels of society, all of the institutions, so that no one will ever be able to oppose these people. Some people say you don't have any proof that you could corroborate the evidence that you've been talking about over these years. What do you have to say to these skeptics and these naysayers about your testimony? Well, they're right. A deep black, deeper than black government program is designed to where everyone who goes in and participates, when they leave, they have no proof. They have nothing but a story, if that. Many of them are giving, given psychotropic drugs while they're there to, uh, to cause their memories to be a little wonky, and then they use uh, blank slating technologies on them. So no one is going to come out and, ha and have a book or a manual taken from one of those programs and say, here is the proof. It's, uh, there's no way you can make it up one of the elevators or through the security checkpoints with anything. So, of course, there's gonna be no proof. All there is is cooperation between other people who are considered somewhat legitimate or legitimate whistleblowers. And historical evidence, along with people like William Tompkins coming forward, have uh, definitely led credence, along with people like David Wilcock and Dr. Sala doing heavy, heavy research. Can you both delve into the different extraterrestrial beings that exist amongst us today and why there is no solid proof of evidence that they exist? Wow, yeah, there, you know, the, the government at last report had admitted in, I think, majestic type papers that there were 58 or so uh, groups visiting us with, I think, three or four main groups. Um, the Ebens, uh, which are a group that are peaceful and uh, don't really uh, meddle too much. And then there are the, the Greys, which we should talk about them being the tall Greys. Uh, the short Greys are really just androids or robots that are used by all of them. They all use them. Um, and then you have um, the Reptilians, of course, we talk about that in Above Majestic. And uh, then we have the Nordic types. Um, the Nordic types have told us that they're from all different types of star systems, and there is more than one Nordic type. But what we found out recently is that one of these groups, at least, is us from the future. And there are other groups like this um, Nordic group. There is an African-looking group. There is a, a Polynesian-looking group. I think we're going to find very few of these extraterrestrials are Caucasian or blonde-haired, blue-eyed, like a lot of people depict. Many, many, many of our cosmic cousins from the local 52 star cluster are people of color. And 
when we get to a point to our cosmic cousins actually visiting and integrating with us, we are going to be forced to deal with some of our petty um, racist programming here on our planet. We'll have no choice at that point. We put together programs that went all the way out into the galaxy, not just this galaxy. The collective story that these insiders have shared with me has utterly revolutionized the whole basic discussion. Your parents dropping you off at school, just like any other day, except that day you're pulled aside and told you're going to go on a field trip. We were taken to some kind of facility out on the Nevada desert. We learned and we trained and we did all sorts of operations when we were there. They would give us a chemical, do a shot. And injected me in the side of the neck. Little did I know that I was going to be drafted in the secret space program. There is and has been an ongoing extrasolar planetary colonization program that's been going on for decades and decades. Some believe that Kennedy was actually given information by Forrestal about secret space programs. President Kennedy was indeed going to make some announcements. When he was eliminated in a very public way, the cabal came into power in a very public way. The Deep State is a group of very powerful individuals that have acquired a lot of money, a lot of technology. No one will ever be able to oppose these people. Every book on this planet is misinformation. To program our minds away from the truth. Physics, medicine, history, everything we are taught is wrong. The evidence is voluminous. Free energy. Time travel. The secret space program. Already discovered. We will become a truly galactic civilization. This may sound like insanity. This is what happened. This film is the red pill that wakes you up to what's really going on in the world. Is the recent vamping up of the Space Force in regards to maybe some kind of hostile alien threat amongst us? So President Trump mentioning that, that he's creating a Space Force and this is going to be a new branch of the U.S. military is certainly a very interesting point. And in fact, my fellow commentator, Benjamin Fulford, recently just told me that he was listening to radio in Japan and they were recruiting soldiers for a space force and said that it would be similar to serving on a ship. This is happening now. So we have some really interesting stuff going on here. What does Trump mean by a space force? What are we really hearing here? Where is this all going? I have received briefings about what this is supposed to be and where it's taking us. And it is very interesting. It does appear that we as a planet may need to fight some kind of a battle. Because from what I've been hearing from various insiders, there is a very serious battle going on in space right now. We did apparently have a group of extraterrestrial beings that are highly evil, that have been written throughout our histories and our mythologies going all the way back to the ancient Hindu scriptures where they have Rakshasas, also called snakes, humanoid beings that look reptilian that are very evil. So this is nothing new. These beings show up in people's fears, the archetype of Satan and demons, these beings that have vertical slit pupils, that have scaly skin, there actually is something to that. There's some deep part of our subconscious or our greater higher self that apparently knows these beings exist. All the different ETs that we see are human looking in various forms, but this particular type is indeed derived from reptilian life, but it's reptilian life that evolved into a human-like form. They tend to be a lot taller than we are, sometimes twice the height or more of a conventional human being. They could weigh up to 3,000 pounds, be 14 feet tall, have a five foot wide span of their shoulders. These are very nasty beings. And they came to the earth apparently going back to ancient history. They've been tampering with many different cultures throughout time. 
and they even made a deal with Nazi Germany in the late 1930s before it truly became Nazi Germany and did what it was doing for World War II. All of this stuff is not fiction. I've had too many different insiders who proved their bona fides to me. They showed me the legal documentation of the military service. They speak very articulately. Many of them are not on the record. They all have talked about these reptilian humanoids. And this is one of the things that Above Majestic does so well, is to expose what these beings are, where they came from. We have rare footage from William Tompkins that nobody's ever seen before, except for maybe a few people, in which he's talking about this and the fact that he was there in World War II, taking briefings from 29 different American spies embedded in Germany's secret space program. And one of the things that they were seeing as they were working in these secret facilities is these tall, reptilian-looking humanoids that were obviously extraterrestrials telling everybody what to do, running the show, being in charge. Violent beings, beings you do not want to mess with, beings that will kill you if you disagree with them. So everybody's basically in something like a slave camp. Well, what I've heard from Pete Peterson is that in the not too distant past, there was a war in which we, as in Earth humanity, are now throwing off this Draco reptilian control. We are fighting them. We are fighting them in space. We are fighting them underground. There are entire cities that they had that we have destroyed. We have brought up our level of technology to the point that we are now at parity with them. We can fight them on their own territory. Our weapons are as good as their weapons. And it is a very serious battle that involves thousands of ships, many, many thousands of soldiers. And again, most of these people are living in a breakaway civilization. There was something called the brain drain in the 1950s, in which many, many people got shipped off planet, and they are no longer a part of Earth reality. They don't get to come back. They either stay underground or they stay off planet. In some cases, they're told that we wiped out our planet in the 1980s with a nuclear war, but they can't come home, even if they wanted to. And the information is so tightly controlled that there's no way that they would ever know otherwise. So bear in mind that this is the world that I live in. These are the insiders that I talk to. It's very controversial stuff, but we have heard that there may in fact be a need for us to fend off more of this Draco threat and that there will be a need for people from the conventional world to become aware of this and to engage in the fight. And this is serious, I'm not making this up. This is some of the briefings that I've gotten. I don't know if it's true, but it's certainly a provocative question. Our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. And yet, I ask you, is not an alien force already among us? The greatest error a thinking person can make is to believe that one particular version of history is absolute fact. History is recorded by a series of observers, none of whom were impartial. RF-4 jets spotted and took photographs of a huge carving in the desert over a thousand feet across. No tire tracks and no footprints. The Germans had a settlement on the moon, they had a settlement on Mars, and they were doing this as early as 1939. Between the age of 16 and 17 years old, I was transported to the moon, and after 20 years, I was age regressed back in time and then returned to civilian life. Extraterrestrial spacecraft have appeared over nuclear missile installations and have completely powered them down. We put together programs that went all the way out into the galaxy, not just this galaxy. According to some estimates, we cannot track $2.3 trillion in transactions. This money is going into underground military bases and secret space programs with technology far beyond what many of us could even realize. Everything we learn is designed to program our minds away from the truth. This film is the red pill that wakes you up to what's really going on in the world. 
And at some point, this is all going to break open. The more you get involved, the more compromised you become. They may actually kill you. All right, we just watched a clip from Above Majestic in regards to age regression. Corey, you've been aged regress. Can you tell us the technology behind this? What's it feel like and how old are you as of today? <clears throat> I've been age regressed three times. I've done 320 and backs. Um, what they do is they, the process is they bring you in and they begin putting you on a cocktail of medications immediately that begin to condition your cells and, and DNA for the rest of the treatment. For the treatment, you have to be completely immobile. So they come in with these styrofoam um, uh, kind of braces. They put them between your legs and between your arms and your torso, and then they strap you in with Velcro or belts. And then they give you a medication that puts you into a, a slight coma. And you're in that coma for two weeks as the, as the age regression occurs, and it occurs through um, a chemical means, pharmaceutical means, and is aided through some sort of energetic uh, outside uh, equipment that speeds up the process. So as this is occurring, um, you're if you're you know six foot one and you, you're like 38 years old, 37 years old and you're going back to being, having the physique of a 17 year old, you're gonna lose bone mass. And it's, it's a very uh, interesting process and I don't know all the details about how exactly it works. I wish I did. But at that point, at the end, they put you in this, what looks like a long MRI machine, except it's just one solid uh, machine. It's not a little piece that moves back and forth. And you slide into this giant machine and uh, it activates and then you disappear. But what happens is you reappear in that exact same machine, but 20 years earlier. And then they take you out, uh, rehab you, um, and it's uh, really foggy as to if they do the blank slating and debrief uh, at the end of the 20. Uh, I, I'm not exactly sure exactly when that was because uh, all the medications that they had you on at that point. And, uh, and all, of, all of this uh, is also done as a way of uh, you know, not allowing you to have memories to bring back with you. I'm told that the Nordics brought the 20 and back program to the Americans and told them that this 20 and back program had been used on planet after planet after planet to help liberate it. It was a way of them to come in and gain resources without directly screwing with the timeline of the planet. You know, the, the regular timeline proceeds, but people are pulled out to fight this war as assets, and then they're just plugged back in with no memory of what occurred. It is some sort of crazy cosmic temporal war that's been going on for eons. Um, it feels like getting very, very sleepy, just like going through anesthesia. Um, psychologically, afterwards, you, there's confusion. Your psyche is used to you being a certain stature, age, and now it, ha it has to go back to zero point reference and, and figure everything out. Uh, being that I did three 20 and backs, and I'm 48 years old right now, that would put me around 108 years old. Are you still part of the secret space program? Are you still enlisted? Have you been outcast? I am not enlisted in any programs at this point. I was pretty much, the end of my last 20 and back would have been around 1996, around June or July. At that point, I really didn't uh, have any access to uh, the secret space program. Here and there I would get picked up out of the blue and asked to um, uh, locate portals with other uh, intuitive empaths, but I was not uh, a whole lot of use to them because I had, uh, after three 20 and backs, they had utilized uh, the serum on me too many times and it had burned out some of my neurology and uh, caused you know, some, some issues that it allowed me to no longer be an optimal uh, uh, intuitive empath. 
to be able to uh, interface with the other two to triangulate portals. But uh, I was not involved with the secret space program until around 2014, between 96 and 2014. And now I am uh, kind of forced upon them because of my uh, relationship with the Blue Avians and, uh, and other meetings that I've been brought into because of that position. So I'm, I've sort of was forced on them and uh, uh, they've sort of dealt with me instead of uh, welcomed me in with open arms. Are these UFOs a national security threat? David, you mentioned UFOs in regards to shutting down nuclear missiles at military bases. What's the information on this? So do I believe that UFOs are a national security threat? Well, it would depend on which ones. This is a lot more complicated than most people realize. Up until Project Camelot started bringing out new insiders in 2006, beginning with Mr. X, who never wanted to come forward with his real name, we have had a new wave of disclosure in the UFO community. We were already starting to get some of this in the Disclosure Project event in 2001. Some of the witnesses there had some really interesting things to say when they testified on May 9th, 2001 in front of the National Press Club for the world's press. It didn't get the kind of coverage that it should have, but there were 39 people there. I was there the day after on May 10th, 2001 for the closed executive VIP summary briefing for members of Congress and their aides. I got in as a VIP because I had gotten on to Coast to Coast AM with Art Bell and that was enough to get me press credentials. I'm very, very glad that I got to go, and I did get to meet almost all of those 39 people at that event. That was my introduction to meeting insiders. But then when Project Camelot came out in 2006, I actually got together and affiliated with them in 2007, and I began wanting to get introduced to various insiders they had in exchange for trading my own insider information with them. This is where I met Daniel, who claims to have worked on the Montauk project in which they took a seat out of a flying saucer type of craft, hooked it up to a very high energy power supply, and then with the proper training, a psychic could sit in the chair and that psychic could think about a particular place and a portal would open up in the room that you could actually send people through and they would go to that place. And they quickly figured out they could do this through space and time. Now, Daniel was someone who I spent a long, long time talking to, many, many, countless numbers of hours of getting briefings on this. It's a very, very complicated story, but it fits in with what all the others are saying. Project Camelot comes forward, starts bringing out new information, and I start to meet some of these witnesses, and for whatever reason, they began telling me a lot more than they were telling Bill Ryan and Kerry Cassidy. That's not my fault. It's not something that I wanted them to do, but it just turned out that they were trusting me more for whatever reason. They were telling me things that they didn't want to say to anyone else. They were worried about the possibility that this information would go public, and I convinced them that I would keep their confidentiality. So it wasn't really until I met Emery Smith, Pete Peterson, and Jacob in 2009 that my information on all this started to go into warp drive. And what I've since learned is very important. We do have a war taking place between different types of extraterrestrials. Almost every insider you meet is going to tell you that the vast majority of all the extraterrestrials that are out there visiting us today, using cloaking technology so we rarely see their ships, occasionally we do, so when we're looking at extraterrestrials, we're looking at that most of them are benevolent. Most of them are the good guys. They've showed up in various cultures as gods, as angels, as benevolent spiritual teachers. And then you have a much smaller number that are very aggressive and very evil. And this war, by the way, between extraterrestrials, this is a war that is fought by proxy. We are the proxies. The choices that we make determine how that extraterrestrial battle takes place. The reason why is that we have a lot of free will over what's going to happen on this planet. So we have to authorize bad things to happen. The authorization comes by us allowing ourselves to be conquered. 
The negative has to advertise what they're doing. They have to show us the symbols. They do it in music videos. They do it in movies. They do it at the Super Bowl halftime show. They did it in the Olympics opening and closing ceremonies. They put the symbolism in our faces. Many of these various things show us these symbols. For example, the F in the Facebook logo is very similar to the logo for Two Ball Cane. We see in the Google Play logo something that looks very much like the sigil of Lucifer. There's lots of examples like this you can dig up if you go digging for it online. My point in telling you this is not to scare you. My point in telling you this is to understand that we actually have the control. We have the control over how the future is going to go. The negative beings are not allowed to do more than what we authorize. And so what their focus is, is on trying to get us manipulated to the point where we are selfish, greedy, manipulative to one another, and then in so doing, we authorize these disasters to take place. So yes, there are certain national concer security concerns regarding certain types of ETs, but as long as we on Earth maintain positivity, those ETs cannot come after us and hurt us. I wanna get both of you guys' honest opinion. Do you feel safe now, and when this documentary comes out and the public basically gets a hold of this information, what are you guys gonna do next? There's definitely danger involved. I have on my Sphere Being Alliance YouTube channel, there's a um, video that I took of a Chinook helicopter flying around my house. It, when I first came out of the house, it was flying above my pool directly, and there was someone in the service entrance in the back looking out at me. And I ran back in the house, I got my camera, and came out and videotaped it doing about five or six more orbits around my home. Um, months later, I'm out in the backyard with my son, and green laser dots start appearing on my chest. So I put my hand on the back of my son's head and guide him in as fast as I can. These are obviously warnings. Um, there's one of the, I didn't want to come out with my information. I was kind of uh, pushed out by uh, um, some, uh, some people that, that wanted me out uh, before I was ready. Uh, but coming out in a big way, I didn't do until David Wilcock talked me into it. And I was really worried about my career, my IT career. I was worried about a lot of things, including uh, violence, because we had things, weird things happening around our house as well. Um, and he told me, he said, if you come out, they can't attack you physically. If they do, then they're validating your information and you become a martyr. You know, that made enough sense to where um, you know, I started you know, working with him and, and doing uh, interviews. So there is definitely a danger, especially with the content of the movie that we've put out. Uh, that's, it's going to anger a lot of people in uh, positions of power who lean towards the dark side. And they're going to do whatever they can to rattle our cage. Ancient writings and ancient texts of books describe a ship known as the Vimana. Is there a Vimana in any government's hands right now being reverse engineered? Have you seen one yourself, Corey? They've definitely been discovered in different parts of the, of the world, underground. Um, now, the most recent example I heard of this was in Antarctica. In Antarctica, about 70,000 years ago, there were three ships, like motherships, that were crash landing, there's a much longer history, you can find that on, on my Sphere Being Alliance channel, that were crash landing on the Earth. And they crash landed in what is now uh, Antarctica, which was a lush, beautiful uh, forest at that time, for, uh, un un uncovered by ice. They cannibalized their ships and developed a civilization there that we would call Atlantis. Um, about 11,000 years ago, give or take, there was a catastrophe and um, the earth spun on its axis and the ocean went over Antarctica and flash froze and completely covered that, that civilization. They cannibalized the technology that they had brought with them from off-world and what uh, our scientists, when, when, when we discovered this, 
Our scientists went down and our military went down and started excavating with steam, hoses, dropping big bags of water down and shooting them with microwaves and causing it to explode to open up areas. And they discovered in these motherships there were vimana. And these were some of the most ornate ones that they'd ever seen that looked like they were for royalty. So they got their hands on that fairly recently, probably in the last, you know, 20, 30 years. I believe that not only were uh, some of the technologies that we've developed in the secret space programs, were they developed from reverse engineered extraterrestrial craft or uh, temporal craft from the future, but we also had the Nazi secret space program that was going out to the east looking for all of these manuscripts that supposedly had blueprints for building Vimana and then bringing those back to Germany and building what was the beginning of their secret space program along with you know, people channeling uh, like Maria Orsic and uh, their own scientists being at least 20 years ahead of the Americans technology wise and engineering wise. So we've, we've definitely had access to Vimana for some time. Do you guys believe the official story that if they did reveal extraterrestrial existence to the planet that we would go nuts and the world would fall apart? My opinion is, I'm ready for it. You guys are ready for it. Do you think the people are ready for it? To answer that question, I do think we're ready for disclosure. We've had generations of disclosure already happening. We've already heard from great insiders who've given us great information. Dr. Stephen Greer's Disclosure Project in 2001 was truly a monumental event. I was very fortunate to be able to be there myself to meet those, most of those 39 insiders. And then I had many other insiders come forward to me afterwards. And now it's kind of unfortunate in a way that a lot of these people didn't come forward to anybody else but me. I'm not even really sure why that is. I was very good at keeping people's confidentiality. I'm a great talker, people liked me, they wanted to hang out. So I got to know a lot of different people who had some very interesting things. And when you get into this world, the information is so complicated, there's so many things you hear, you can't possibly remember everything people tell you. It's so intense, but then what happens is, you'll be talking to somebody else, and then that somebody else will bring up things that you heard from two or three other people. And it's as if they're all part of a greater community with a commonly shared body of information that they're all drawing off of. This makes it so unlikely that what I was hearing could have in any way been the product of lying or some kind of elaborate disinformation campaign. I know it's very hard for people to believe that this is true, but there actually is a lot of evidence. When people say there is no evidence, that is something the media has trained them to say. It is a psychological operation run by groups like the Central Intelligence Agency trying to make you blind to the truth. So if we get some kind of disclosure, are we going to get the whole truth? Or are we going to only get part of the truth? Or is it all going to be made up? We stand at the birth of a new millennium ready to unlock the mysteries of space, to free the Earth from the miseries of disease, and to harness the energies, industries, and technologies of tomorrow. After the inauguration, the president signed a number of secret memorandums stating that he wanted the release of advanced technology. And a lot of this technology was involved in the space program. We know that President Trump is aware of advanced technologies because his uncle was the one who went in and cleared out the safe of Tesla after his death. Aside from the Secret Space Program Alliance, we have a different alliance. The Alliance is an international group. It is a confederacy. There are lots of different factions, some of which agree, some of which do not agree, about the only thing that they all have in common is they want to see this elitist cabal come down in flames. They do not want these people trying to kill off most of the planet, trying to control all of this immensely high technology. The Alliance also consists of a surprising majority now 
of personnel in the U.S. military and in the U.S. intelligence community. So we're going to have to deal with the fact sooner or later and probably sooner that not everybody in the government is bad. This is part of the PSYOP that was put out through movies and through media to get us to completely distrust all levels of society, all of the institutions, so that no one will ever be able to oppose these people. Nobody can really know that yet. I can't make any type of proclamation that would say for certain how disclosure is going to go down. What I do know is that there are groups on this planet that want to tell us the truth. They want to show us the truth. There are ways in which unequivocal proof could be demonstrated. What it probably is going to come down to, as I have heard from Pete Peterson, is that they are going to do things similar to the World's Fair in which various extraterrestrial craft that crashed and were recovered and kept in places like Hangar 18, Area 51, will be brought to major cities. There will be displays that happen where you can see the ships. Now, I don't know if they're going to allow people to actually go inside the ships or if they're just gonna let them see it from a distance with some kind of barrier in the way. For all I know, they may actually allow you to go inside. So this is what I'm hearing, that there will be a massive amount of technology and information that is released. We very likely will get introduced to various extraterrestrial groups. This is one of the things I've also heard very consistently. And we've also heard that our own military industrial complex has very advanced craft that they are going to decloak in our atmosphere. And again, people would say, well, yeah, that's a hoax, right? That's just a Project Blue Beam, it's a hologram. Not if they decloak it and they land it and then you get inside and take a ride and they film the whole thing and then you come back and other people go inside and they film it and they come back. And bear in mind that not only has the Trump administration announced the creation of the Space Force, but they have the Orion capsule sitting there on the White House lawn right now. And that Orion capsule sure looks an awful lot like a spacecraft, like a UFO, landing on the proverbial White House lawn. They're sending us messages. They're getting us ready for something. This is why QAnon telegraphed the existence of a secret space program. There's a lot of people who want to tell the truth. And by making videos like this, we are also creating an opportunity. This is an opportunity in which we can pose the difficult questions. If the powers that were try to give us partial disclosure, if they try to corral us so that we can only hear about certain things, we can only get certain information, they're not gonna tell us the whole truth, you, the person watching this video right now, I'm talking to you, you could be one of the ones, or maybe even the person ultimately, who makes it all turn around. We have the power to address our elected leaders. We can write them, we can do petitions, we can do peaceful protests, we can make our voices heard as an electorate. We can bring out the truth, we can speak truth to power, and we can allow ourselves to become those inquisitors who force disclosure to come to the surface because we will not accept partial disclosure. We will not accept only hearing little bits of the truth. Remember that the things that I've been telling you come from multiple different insiders. There's actually a wealth of scientific evidence that backs all this stuff up. I've written three books now with Penguin Random House, The Source Field Investigations, The Synchronicity Key, and The Ascension Mysteries. There's over a thousand academic references in source field. There's over 700 in synchronicity key. And there's over 400, I believe, in Ascension Mysteries. So this is a huge body of information. It's not something where I'm asking people to take my word for it. It's not simply the result of one or two insiders who can be easily debunked. This is the result of talking to dozens of different insiders doing the scientific research to back up what they say. And we have wonderful YouTube channels like Third Phase of the Moon who are coming out with 
truly groundbreaking research every week, bringing you the information you need to understand what's happening in this world, fighting these powers that would try to keep the secrets from us. We can't be held down anymore. Our voices are becoming too strong. We're unifying as a community. We're bringing this message out, and we need your help. We need your help by watching things like Third Phase of the Moon, other very prominent YouTube channels like Collective Evolution, Secure Team 10, and of course, watching the movie Above Majestic. If disclosure does happen, who's going to break it? Is it going to be the United States? Could it be Russia? Could it be China? Or could it be the extraterrestrials themselves? What's your thoughts? I really would love to know the answer to this question just as much as anybody else. And again, it's like trying to read the tea leaves before this has actually happened. There are countries that have already tried to do disclosure, but the force of mainstream media censorship and control is very powerful. Look at what's happening with Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all of these different social media platforms just outright banning people, taking away pages that have millions of followers left and right, doing it for the right-wing side, where it has to do with Republican conservative ideals, doing it for the left wing, where it's about nutrition, organic food, exercise, healthy eating. They're doing it to everybody. And they're really doing it in this field of UFOs, conspiracy theory, conspiracy analysis, the secret space program. All of these mysterious secrets are coming together and we are getting the truth out. We are the disclosure. So don't wait for a country like China or Russia or the United States to make an official announcement. We are doing this ourselves. You are helping by watching a movie like Above Majestic, a true disclosure phenomenon, a red pill movie that can take somebody who doesn't know anything and give them a truly alarming wake up call to smell the coffee. This is not something that's gonna take years. This is something that could take months. We just need enough people on the same page bring this message out, doing the research like we see here on Third Phase of the Moon, bringing you knowledge, bringing you information that is transforming the very nature of consciousness itself. And with that, let's go to the next question. All right, David, I know you and Corey have been friends for quite some time. I just want to get your thoughts. When Corey was explaining to you some of these stories that he explains his visitation to the Antarctic, and the war of the reptilians and the avian blues. What was your first thought? Did you think this guy was nuts? And how did you guys first meet anyway? Okay, that's a pretty complicated question, but let's begin with how did I first meet Corey Good? Corey Good began writing me emails, and I think I've traced it all the way back to about 2009. And at the time, he was only leaking to me certain pieces of weird information he picked up during his time working for the Texas State Guard. And there was some pretty cool stuff there. We talked from time to time. We had limited amount of dialogue, not a whole lot. We'd talk a few times a year by email. But he didn't ever really tell me what he knew, what he had remembered. That didn't happen until he decided to come forward on a much larger level, the first emails of which I saw in October 2014. And at that time, he emailed Bill Ryan and Kerry Cassidy of Project Camelot, he interviewed or tried to get an interview with Benjamin Fulford and he wrote me. Now I have to admit, when I first got these emails from Corey Good, I didn't know what to think about this dude. And I kind of just held back. Uh, he's talking pretty strange. He's got a lot of weird jargon that I haven't heard before. Uh, let me just watch for a while, see what this guy's up to, see where this is going. I'm not gonna make any sudden moves. So he did first interview with Project Camelot. Benjamin Fulford didn't really take the invitation. And I started to see him writing various things in discussion forums and making various posts. And it was after reading this in more depth that I started to see, oh my gosh, how does he know about that? How does he know about that? How does he know about this? Where did he get that from? Nobody's ever said this publicly before. Where did that come from? How did he get this? That's when I got excited. I wrote him and I said, dude, we need to talk. And it actually took about a week before he started to talk to me. 
But very quickly, this is now about the end of October 2014, beginning of November 2014. We began talking for about two hours at a time, almost every day. And I had my little recorder running the whole time, so we do have all that audio uh, from all those conversations. There was a certain amount of personal material, but basically I was just interrogating the heck out of this guy. And along the way, I kept bringing up things that I had heard from other insiders, and it was absolutely amazing how much correlation there was with all the different people I met from Disclosure Project, with multiple other insiders, many of whom, for whatever reason, as I said, have only been willing to speak with me. Here's a guy who seems to know little bits of what everybody else has said. He's got this overarching degree of knowledge. It was stunning how many dots were connecting, names of programs, secret code words, very specific pieces of information, very quirky things in which I would start a sentence, he would finish it, and we both are talking about something that we both had heard about, or in my case, I heard about it, in his case, he had experienced it. Now, you mentioned in your question this idea of a war between the Blue Avians and the Draco Reptilians, and I wouldn't really call it that because the blue avians operate at a level where they don't directly interact with these reptilian beings. They would be more like overseers, giving advice, giving guidance, helping people out. They work at a level where the Draco would never even be able to see them or access them. The war is really more of a war that's taking place between beings that we would consider to be living inside the earth they are what we would think of as angelic, and when they did end up meeting with Corey starting in March of 2015, it started with the Blue Avians, and it wasn't until later that he actually met with these inner Earth beings that called themselves the Anshar. Now, I have had dreams and visionary experiences with beings just like this my whole life. I had written about it long before Corey came along. Many other people have had similar types of experiences I don't believe this is fake. These people do seem to exist. They are very human-like. Many of them could pass for people on Earth. You wouldn't notice any difference. And yet, they are very different. They are not the same at all. They have amazing capabilities, amazing technology, and amazing spiritual development. These people are telepathic. They read minds. They have the ability to levitate themselves. Corey actually did go to their cities at one point and saw some of these people levitating. They have very advanced technology and they represent the next level of human evolution, which apparently we're going to go through as well. We're going to become like these beings where we can move things with our mind, where we can hear each other's thoughts, where we have access to the different lifetimes that we've led throughout time and space. We can see beyond one incarnation we have the ability to look beyond the veil of living and dying, to understand this life and the afterlife, see how the two work together, and be able to help facilitate people as they transition from one realm to the other, what we would typically call physical death. It's not really death. You do live forever. Your soul will always exist. And in that sense, nothing's really dangerous, and you will always go on with your identity, with your consciousness. You're never going to be lost. You're never going to fade into some blackness. We don't need to be afraid of death. So what's happening is that these inner earth beings, the Anshar, the fourth dimensional angelic types, are fighting against these demonic, negative, evil reptilians. They are nasty. They are more evil than we could ever even imagine. And this battle's been going on for hundreds of thousands of years. It didn't start on Earth. It got brought to us. It's been imported, let's say. And so, as I said earlier in the interview, this is a proxy war. It doesn't just happen here between these beings. It happens between us. The beings are fighting each other based on the choices that we make. The more that we act in a loving, positive, compassionate way, the more that those inner earth beings can fight on our behalf and can win. They have the ability to totally defeat the reptilians. The war only is being fought because of us. And we need to fight for disclosure, bringing the truth out to the public, getting this information out, 
will be what defeats this archetypal devil that lives in hell below the surface of the ground in these underground bases, some of which, if you went there, are very nasty. And in fact, the reptilians like things hotter than we do. So these, in some cases, are very hot cities with a high temperature. And I know some people are laughing, and that's OK. If you need to laugh in order to hear the truth, that's OK. But what is going to happen is there will be a point at which you're not going to be laughing, in which this is all going to become very serious, disclosed on an official level, no longer subject to this type of laughter. And this war has been going on for a long time. We are involved in the center of it. We are caught in the middle of it. The choices that each of us make on our own free will basis determine the outcome of the collective. Corey Good is not a god. Corey Good is not a savior. I've never looked at him that way. I've seen plenty of flaws in him that probably most people never would. And he has seen plenty of flaws in me. I'm a real guy too. I put my pants on one leg at a time. I make dumb mistakes. I use rude language sometimes. I've done it on stage plenty of times. I'm not perfect. I don't claim to be. I'm just a researcher who's had some very interesting pieces of the puzzle put in front of me. And I've taken those pieces and I've run with them and I've done the homework. And I've done whatever it is, 625 episodes of television now. A lot of stuff. So the other part of the question is regarding Corey Good's visit to the Antarctic. And that's another really, really complicated subject. Antarctica is a lot more interesting than we have given it credit for. If you look at the Piri Reyes map, where you see the coastline of South America, and then it's joined by a land bridge to what appears to be Antarctica, that's very interesting. And what's even more interesting is the Orontius Phineas map, which very clearly shows Antarctica. Except it shows Antarctica with a lot less ice. And in International Geophysical Year 1954, we did the first sonar surveys of the land beneath the surface of Antarctica. You'll notice in the Orontius Phineas map, there's a little chunk over here, and then there's a bigger piece of Antarctica. That's exactly what's really down there that we now know from using sonar, which we didn't know till 1954. And yet this is an ancient map copied over from scrolls that are hidden away in the Vatican Library after they stole them from the Library of Alexandria, pretended to burn the whole thing down, but actually brought all the best stuff to the Vatican. So Antarctica was not always covered by ice. The Earth did shift on its physical axis, apparently because of a nuclear war from extraterrestrial civilizations that had colonized the Earth. And there were two different major types that were here. There was the people with the elongated skulls, which we still find those skeletons all over the planet. We see the remains of humans with elongated skulls all over the world. When you look at Egypt, there are countless depictions of the pharaohs having these weirdly elongated skulls. This includes Akhenaten, Nefertiti, and their daughter Meritaten. In the case of Meritaten, there are multiple granite busts that you can see that were carved of her in which she clearly has no hair and has this freakishly elongated skull. Remember, this is a culture that was apparently building pyramids at the time that these sculptures were made. Then you go across to the other side of the Atlantic Ocean and once again, you have a pyramid building culture in Mesoamerica with people depicted in their inscriptions who have elongated skulls. And unlike the case of Egypt, with Mesoamerica, we now have the added benefit that there are multiple elongated skulls that have been dug up and were not censored, but are actually on display in museums in places like Bolivia. And most recently, even in Europe, we have found tombs of the nobility, the wealthy people who preserve their bloodlines, such as in France. And they also have this bizarre elongated skull feature. Then it gets even more outrageous when you discover that the royal families of Norway, Sweden, Spain, and Denmark are all descendants of the same elongated skull Diest clan. The bottom line is these people are tracking their lineage, they're tracking their bloodline,
and they're making sure that their own people get steered into the positions of the highest power and influence worldwide, including the United States of America. We find them in Mesoamerica. There's plenty of examples of that where you actually see the skulls. Brian Forster has done a great job of finding those skulls. We see them on display in various museums, such as in Bolivia. And then over in, Egy in Egypt, we see the pharaohs like Akhenaten, Nefertiti, and their daughter Meritaten, where Meritaten in particular, we have these wonderful busts in which she has a totally bald head and a wildly freakishly elongated skull. On the Egyptian side of things, those elongated skull skeletons have been found, but they have not been disclosed to the public. But in Mesoamerica, there was a lot more of them, and so we got to see that. So those people with the elongated skulls, apparently they originated when they landed here in what we call Antarctica. It was a habitable area, and there are lots and lots of pyramid-like ruins down there underneath the ice. They had a nuclear war another civilization in which a lot of the people had blue skin but looked human and this would be like Krishna. That's the group that becomes the historic Aryan race which in the Aryan migration came down from what we now call Siberia and migrated into Iran and into India. And so we hear these records of beings with blue skin and this war that occurred between that civilization from India called Rama and the Atlantean civilization. They apparently did use nuclear weapons. They blew each other up and they knocked the planet over on its axis. And in the process, Antarctica went from being a nice place to live to getting a massive flood, and then all that water froze and turned into glaciers. So the interesting part is that there's volcanic hotspots underneath the ice in which there's these caves you can go into, and there are still ruins in there that are very ancient, there's technology, there's stone buildings, there's amazing stuff. The Germans were the first to discover this with their U-boots. They sailed into these places. They found that there were cities that they could still reoccupy. They could clean them up, they could create doors, they could pressurize the interior, and they could live comfortably. There are massive, massive covert facilities down in Antarctica. Corey Good is only one of multiple insiders I've met who have actually been to Antarctica and seen this for themselves. The phenomenon known as Q, or QAnon, came onto the scene at the very end of October 2017. And what essentially occurred is that a group that called themselves Q began posting on anonymous online image boards called 4chan and 8chan. And what they were posting was a lot of questions, a lot of suggestions, a lot of very interesting and intriguing data sets that essentially laid out a real-time takedown of the deep state by alliance and white hat groups behind the scenes. As the QAnon briefings recently stated, these indictments are going to be like Watergate times a thousand. We've never seen anything like this in the history of the world. Some of the most recent QAnon briefings, which our insiders have told us, is coming from the alliance have said that there are many, many figures in the controlled mainstream media who are in these indictments as well. So Harvey Weinstein is just the beginning. And isn't it interesting that when Harvey Weinstein was finally arrested, in his hand he had the biography of Elia Kazan, who was a guy in early Hollywood history who was brought in during the McCarthy investigations and sang like a songbird and ratted out many other people in Hollywood and Weinstein has now said he is doing the same thing and that everybody in Hollywood was doing the same stuff that he was doing. So he was upset about why he got singled out. So once these indictments become unsealed, this will be the fulfillment of the mass arrest scenario that I have been leaking on my website since 2009. This is nothing new. It didn't start with the QAnon briefings. It has nothing to do with who's president of the United States right now. This is a decades-long effort in the making, and they have tried and tried and tried in various ways to get this to work. They've had consistent failures, and now they're being much more systematic and much more methodical. It's all gonna be done legally. All of the indictments are totally bona fide. 
And it's just that once this finally happens, it will be something we have never seen before in all of American history, a true second American revolution. All right, obviously QAnon is an extremely complicated subject and one that I have devoted an extraordinary amount of time to researching. And I have a pretty unusual experience uh, and backstory with Q because before Q ever started, I had met someone else who was doing a very similar thing on 4chan. Q started on 4chan, then quickly migrated over to 8chan, which is a lot less contentious and crazy. In the movie Above Majestic, we blow the lid off of the QAnon story. We're bringing you information, telling you what's really going on. We're analyzing some of the writings, and I do believe that the QAnon story is real. To me, it started with Meganon communicating through the same means. I got to talk to her on the phone in several different conversations. She blew my mind with her knowledge. It appeared that she had worked very closely with Donald Trump and that she still had some direct connection to him. She was telling me all kinds of things before it came out in the news. I wrote about her several times in my articles. And then all of a sudden, once I put the limelight on her, it made her popular, only really about two weeks later is when QAnon started. Now, QAnon has become the official voice of the Alliance. They don't want anybody else releasing briefings except through this means. And we've gotten this through various sources. So we used to get lots of briefings. I used to be getting all kinds of amazing information from various insiders. There were leaks upon leaks upon leaks. They wanted us to get the truth out. And I'm very happy that Q has happened because now they have a way of actually doing this where they can get so much information out, they're not relying on me. I've apparently made the Alliance mad many times because they've wanted certain pieces of information to get out on a time-sensitive basis. They tried to pass it through me. I have lots of stuff going on in my life, lots of problems, lots of idiosyncrasies. I wasn't able to always do what they wanted. And frankly, some of the stuff is too political, too partisan, stuff that I don't want to take sides about. So now they've got the Q thing, and that's wonderful because there's so much more information than they could have ever brought through any one person like me. Millions of people have analyzed it. Millions of people are looking at it. And the grain of truth to me is very consistent. They have gone dead quiet since October 9th when they gave us this cryptic message about how everybody's complaining about how long it takes. And now we've had people doing the research suggesting that there's going to be a break that takes place, and after the break, they're gonna come back, and they're gonna have really amazing new information that's gonna to lead to these mass arrests taking place. So the month of November of 2018 is gonna be interesting. It may take longer, we really don't know. They have to get the FBI and the Department of Justice cleaned up. They have to get as many of the deep state operatives out of the way as possible so that justice can move forward in an appropriate way. That's what I think is coming next. 700,000 subscribers right here at Third Phase Moon. I want to give you guys both a chance to say one last thing to our subscribers, something that's important. Well, first of all, congratulations. 700,000 subscribers is an amazing, amazing number. And you should be proud of yourself for getting that many people paying attention. Let's hope that your channel is not disturbed or messed with and that you continue to get this truth out. There's not very many people making these kinds of waves in the UFO community. Your voice is important. Lots of people are paying attention to you. By doing this interview with me, I hope that you'll get a lot more subscribers as well. So you asked me if there's something that we could take away from all this, something that your subscribers could use as a result of seeing the movie Above Majestic and watching this movie, watching this movie that we made together here for YouTube. So let me just say this. Above Majestic is a very brave, very daring movie. We are speaking truth to power unlike anything you've seen before, stringing together the beings with the elongated skulls, the history of the Cabal going all the way back to its extraterrestrial roots. We talk about QAnon, we talk about the secret space program. It is jam-packed with information. It's controversial stuff. It's upsetting stuff. It's going to scare some people. It's kind of like, what's the best horror movie? Tell the truth. Tell people what's really going on in the world and that will scare the bejesus out of them. Because this is a very overwhelming body of data to take in. 
So the movie is not necessarily going to leave you feeling warm and fuzzy, but maybe with this interview I can help to dispel some of that and try to bring in more of the positivity. We will be okay. Learning the truth about what's going on is our freedom. And so the more that we bring this truth out, the more that we bring this message out to the people, the more that people are waking up to what's really going on. And it's happening one person at a time. Disclosure is an individual process. Yes, there may be events in the future where this all happens on a collective level, but in the meantime, we have multiple opportunities to see this manifesting on the individual level. And that is very important. We work together as a collective to bring out the truth, and we will get the disclosure that we want. This film, Above Majestic, helps us get there. This YouTube channel, Third Phase of the Moon, is a very helpful part of disclosure. You're doing the hard work. You're doing the research. You're following up on leads. You're showing people that there is real truth to this investigation. This is not something that people made up. We have to turn over a lot of rocks. We don't always know what we're going to find. Not all these research leads pan out. Sometimes we go down a certain road, and then some information comes up, and we find out, ah, oh, we thought that was some kind of a pyramid and it turns out that it's just a glacier. Or we thought this was some kind of UFO and it's not. It's a camera defect or whatever. Those things do happen. But the overall investigation is stronger than any one piece being knocked out. There's so many different layers to the investigation. There's so many insiders and whistleblowers who have come forward. It's so intricate. When you look at it from a macro view, when you see how the pieces fit together, even if some of them might not be quite right, the overall view is overwhelmingly compelling. We know something is going on. We know we are being lied to. We know that there are interstellar capable craft that our military industrial congressional complex has already built. We know that we have already colonized our solar system. This is not superstition. This is not fake news. Doesn't matter if fake book doesn't let us advertise the movie Above Majestic, we still came out on our debut day, October 30th, number one on iTunes, number one on Amazon Video in the documentary category, and number one in Amazon's hot new releases. We also made it up to number 18 in all of the movies being seen on iTunes. We were ahead of Solo, the next Star Wars film with a $275 million budget. And Above Majestic, based on what we were talking about with the Orchard Entertainment, that the whole budget for the film was probably less than $50,000. So this is amazing. It still looks good, it's got production value, but yet somehow we became the mouse that roared. We went up against corporate films costing hundreds of millions of dollars, and we beat them. And we were able to get this message out. People are ready for the truth. They're hearing what we have to say. No level of government, social media suppression is gonna hold us down. The truth is breaking out. So please support channels like Third Phase of the Moon, and please go and see Above Majestic. I wanna thank you guys for having me on your channel, and I hope that you watching this will have had fun and learned something you might not have already felt, or at the very least, you might enjoy laughing at me and thinking that this is all nonsense, but just remember what I told you, because at some point, you will no longer have the luxury of ignorance. <laughs> Thanks a lot. I'm David Wilcock for Third Phase of the Moon. We'll see you next time. <sighs> what would I leave people with? There is a lot of scary information in Above Majestic, but there is also empowering information. The empowering information is that all legitimate ET contacts, we've been asked two things. Bring about, um, you know, increase our consciousness, become more spiritual, and demand the release of suppressed technologies. Well, through, the mo through movies and media, we're trying to bring disclosure to people, but we're also trying to mobilize people uh, to events like 11-11. Here on the 11th of November, in Washington, D.C., in, in front of, um, I believe, the uh, Lincoln Memorial, we're going to have a mass meditation and do a peaceful protest demanding the release of 
suppress technologies, not the release of information about aliens. Everybody's programmed with the giggle factor to, you know, just blow you off the minute, minute you mention aliens. Everyone can connect with health technologies, free energy, um, uh, desalination technologies, uh, technologies that can clean our oceans. Everyone can connect with that and get behind that, no matter what um, affirmative or, um, or uh, no matter what public uh, action groups they're a part of. All of it goes back to the same solution, and that is us demanding the release of suppressed technologies. And I would invite everyone to join us in DC on the 11th.